what's up? We are back. Episode two of season one of Bad vs. Wild. This episode was good. This one was good. I saw, I mean, of course, there's a lot of tweaks that can be done. There's a lot of like dead air in certain scenes, which I think was due to the music. And I guess the games are a little juvenile, but I mean, I, like I said, I'm not going to knock them for this first season. At least they're trying something different. But at least we got to have the full set of three rounds of games. We got the fights, obviously, but at least they completed the entire task of actually completing the games. And we got a winner at the end. But yeah, I'm excited about this one. This one was good. I like the cast. Um, I like the teams. And yeah, we're going to get into it. But before I do, I got to thank y'all again, as always, for always being engaged. You're dropping in the comments, thumbs up the videos. Last week, the video from last week got 61,000 views. I know a lot of that is due to Natalie being a cheater, which I thank you, Natalie. Thank you so much for bringing the traction to the video. But a lot of people as well, too, thought, I don't know why, because it says in the title, recap. Some people thought the video was actually going to be the full video, which I don't understand why, because I'm not posting the full video. I don't have the time to do that, nor am I going to do that because I would get copyrighted and it would get blocked. You wouldn't see it anyway. If you don't want to watch Zeus, Find another, I don't know, find another shot, find another site to watch it for free. But the shit is four or five dollars. Like, if you don't have that, I don't know what to tell you, but do what you do with your money. But you're not going to see the full episode here. But as I say, please read the, the title and don't get mad at me because you don't see the video of the episode because it clearly says recap. But those of you that know that, thank y'all so much for coming back. Thank y'all for thumbsing up the video. Thank y'all for dropping the comments. Please do that now. Just let me know what's up. And like I said, while watching it, if you have any comments, spam the, com spam the comments. I'm going to read it. I'm going to respond. And yeah, let's get into it. All right. The teams that we got this week, we got my guilty pleasure. She is my favorite. She's literally my guilty pleasure. Tokyo Tony, she has filled the void. I don't know if y'all know her. BK Tidal Wave. Um queen of brooklyn if y'all don't remember her she passed a couple years ago but she has the same energy that tokyo tony has like they both are just extremely blunt extremely chaotic extremely loud extremely boisterous and very opinionated and not scared to say what is on their mind even if it is controversial that's how they are she tokyo tony that's that she's my guilty pleasure and she's kind of filled that void that was missing with BK Tidal Wave as she's passed on. But I love Tokyo. I'm excited that she's here. I'm excited to see this. And then we got Carlissa, her opponent, which is Blueface's mama, who I got to say as well, she's a beautiful woman. Like, she is a beautiful woman. But those two are the two that are going against each other. They had some beef. I'm going to put that in the air quotes online. But that's why they're here. And we're going to introduce their teams. Team Bad is Carlissa's team. So we got Callie, which I'm assuming now, which I think I now know after watching it, Callie is one of Blueface's sisters. So we got Callie, we got Kay Capri from Jocelyn's uh, Cabaret season three. We got Anna Mack from Bad East East. We got Mangina from One More Chance season one and two. And then we got Slim from One More Chance season one. Was it one? Two. Season two. Was she on season one or season two? She, I think she was on season two. Slim was on season two of One More Chance and Batty South and completely embarrassing herself going and auditioning for a show that you've been on, for a network that you've been on, a show that you've been on, been on multiple different shows, but she's auditioning for Batty's Caribbean. Embarrassing. But Team Wild, Team Wild is my favorite team. Team Wild's got a lot of the, the players that I like. We got Tokyo Tony. You already know I love her. Sukiyana. I, I like Suki. Suki's just entertaining to me. Yodela. That's who needs to be on Baddies. She is Baddies personified. I loved Yodela on One More Chance both seasons. She fight. She's pretty. She's a baddie. She got her own businesses. Like, she's really with it. And she just had twins. And looking at how she looks on here, it's like, damn, she snapped back. She snapped back fast. We got Sydney Starr, who is the transgender diva, who is very entertaining. I'm not going to lie to you. When I first started reviewing the show, which is the first time I jumped on YouTube, which was Baddie's ATL, that was the first show I've ever recapped. Sydney was on it. Sydney was annoying to me on there because the people that she was on there with, the cast for the majority, they weren't trying to do all that stuff. She was trying to make a show 
which I feel like now she would be okay on baddies. Any type of baddies, I feel like she would be okay because she has enough people that can literally entertain her bullshit. But Sydney is entertaining to me. She's funny. I don't know why, but she's funny to me. We got Stoney from One More Chance Season 2. I liked her as well on that season. And Black Diamond. She's the only one I don't know. But the rest of those other ones, I loved all of them. So that's my team going into it. But the teams, they arrive. Um, Carlissa and Tony, they don't fuck with each other. We don't know why. So they showed the flashback. Tokyo Tony's on live. I think I might have missed this live, but I see just about every Tokyo Tony live. But she's saying that Carlissa allowed her and her daughter to get their ass beat at the same time, which we know, Krishan. <laughs> Carlissa said, fuck that bitch. She always talking shit. And she gonna have to show her how them hands work. And Tokyo said, there's no woman on God's green earth that she don't want to see. So in this moment, I'm like, okay, they talking big shit. So we'll see if they throw hands. We'll see. But backstage, we got Mangina with his team. Um, I hope I'm not misgendering him. Because Mangina, I don't, I don't know if he's like considered trans. Because I know, I don't know. Because I don't follow Mangina, but I, I don't know. If I'm misgendering him, I hope I'm not. But please don't take offense to it. If I am, just let me know what it is respectfully. I'm trying to respectfully respect him or them or her, whichever pronoun you get it. Trust me, lay off me. I ain't too, look. I ain't, <laughs> don't tear me up, but I'm trying to be respectful. But um, Mangina has the beef with Sydney Star, and Carlissa said like if they don't come swinging at you, we not fighting. Like we just trying to win the game. I'm like, love it. They're gonna play a game. <laughs> love it. They at least are gonna try and finish the game. I was like exciting. But Tokyo, Sydney, and Suki, they're all in the same vibe. They all just want to win. They all want to play the game. As long as nobody fucks with them, they'll be good. Sydney says this means a lot more to her than them, which we all know. Sydney's been dying to get back on Zeus. Sydney's been dying to be back on TV. Tokyo and Suki could care less about being on TV. They don't have to be on TV. But Sydney, this is a big thing for her, and she's not lying about it. But we get the stats. Tokyo versus Carlissa. They got a question mark for Tokis because apparently at the time, Tokyo Tony's Instagram has been dis, uh, disabled. Carlissa has 330,000 Instagram followers. They said she has three celebrity children. I don't know the, the other two. The one I do know is Blueface versus Tokyo's one, which we know is Black China Angela White. The milk, uh, the MILF meter, they both have 10 plus. They both look good. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, viral moments, they said Carlissa has five plus and Tokyo has 10 plus. Tokyo got way more than 10 plus viral moments. Let's keep it five true. <laughs> like she got so many viral moments. But Celebrity Beast, they both have five plus. Tokyo got way more than that. Celebrity hookups are both unknown. I don't know of either one of them to be hooking up with celebrities. All right, we get to the games. We got LJ Plummer, whoever the fuck this is. I'm assuming the Lizard's brother because they have the same last name and he does kind of look alike. But he introduced the Lizard. And if you don't know who the Lizard is, that is the CEO, Lemon Pepper, who then introduces Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon comes out there, hyping up the crowd. He introduces Bia. I love Bia. Bia, I've been a fan of Bia. I liked Bia more when she was underground, when she wasn't as mainstream, because I feel like with mainstream artists, once they come up from underground artists and they get the label, they get the money behind them, they kind of lose what made them good. And I feel like Bia's music, I still like her music, but I feel like it's kind of one note now. But Bia back in the day, if y'all ain't if y'all didn't listen to Bia back in the day, like go back and listen to it. I love Bia. But she performed. I'm not gonna lie to you. I skipped through it. I love Bia. I'm probably gonna skip through all the performances. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Because I just want to see what's going on. I'll watch it back, though, later on when I rewatch the episode. But Bia performs. Uh, Nick then states that they're going to have three rounds again. They're going to play the games to win points for their teams. And he introduces Courtney B, who has been emceeing, as we all know. She introduces Big Ant, who is the referee security. And then Nick brings out the teams. Carlissa's team comes out first. Uh, he has her introduce her team, and she actually does. Y'all remember last week? We tried to get the teams introduced, and they didn't want to. They did not want to comply with what he was trying to do. So she introduces her team. They all get their little individual cheers. They go and sit on the couch. Nick then brings out Team Wild, which is Tokyo's team. She comes strutting out there like she meant business, and their team come out there. Their team was crowd. We got the crowd jumping and everything. She introduces her team individually. They get their shouts, and then they go sit down. So Nick then tells them they'll battle it out for three rounds. The first round, the 
the first game they're going to play is called Shake Some, and it's pretty much red light, green light style. So when he says green light, they got to get up and dance. Red light, the music stops, and if they don't freeze, they are supposed to be eliminated. I said they are supposed to because a lot of things that were supposed to happen didn't happen. But Courtney will be the one detecting who is moving to get them out. Detecting. She wasn't really detecting. But they begin, they play this random ass instrumental song with a little bit of a beat. You can tell they probably trying not to play copyrighted music, but essentially that's what they need to do. If anything, play play copyrighted music while filming it, but like do an audio bed over it to where the girls at least seem like they want to dance because they started off dancing like they wanted to dance, but as it got on, you could tell they was like, I'm tired of doing this because the music ain't even that high. But I'm going to go through it. The first, the first or the second song, they got Sydney out first. Carlissa was the third. Callie was the fourth. They went multiple rounds before Anna got eliminated. Mangina and Slim got eliminated, but Slim stayed in for a couple of rounds when she should have been eliminated. But Stoney then got eliminated. Tokyo was out there. Tokyo was a star for me. Tokyo was busting the moves out. She was down there on the ground, them knees. She got Meg the Stallion knees. Tokyo was doing it. And I'm like, Tokyo, for your age, you doing it. Uh, Black Diamond ends up getting eliminated. Sydney then tells Slim she was supposed to have been, not, yeah, Sydney told Slim that she was supposed to have been eliminated. And then that's when they finally eliminated her. Um, it got down to Kay Capri, uh, Yodala, and Tokyo which I expected those three to be the final three. K. Capri ends up getting eliminated. Tokyo and Yodala were the last two standing. And of course, they're on the same team. So in my mind, Team Wild won that round. Nick then proceeds to say Carlissa made a point that she got out prematurely because somebody had pushed her. I'm like, that's not the point. The point is, is that when the music stops, whether you got pushed, nudged, fell off balance, if, you, if you're moving, you're supposed to be gone. So I'm like, that's one, they, that's one thing they need to tweak going into the next season. You have your rules in place, enforce them. If somebody's moving, the whole point is to freeze when the music stops. It don't matter if you got nudged. It don't matter if you just fail. If you move, you out. And it don't even have to be one person because I saw a couple people during multiple rounds that were moving. They should have been eliminated. So that would make the game even better, and it would make it go by a little bit quicker. But maybe I don't know if they were trying to stretch it out. But regardless, it would make it a little bit more tedious and you'd be able to get it done a lot quicker. But because she got pushed, he decides that they want to have a twerk off between the two team captains, which is Tokyo and Carlissa. So they start twerking. Uh, Carlissa was twerking, but Tokyo was winding them hips. Tokyo was getting it. She was getting it. And of course, she won because Clark, uh, Carlissa ain't freeze again. So she lost again. So Tokyo won that first round. The second round, they play keep it a stack again, which y'all know from the last one, if you watched. Um, they got to come up with truths. They ask the players on each team. If they stumble over the questions, they play a dare. And the audience is going to decide if they're telling the truth. If the audience thinks that they're lying, they'll get a dare. Courtney will then give them the dare, and then they'll get a point if they complete the task. So Ant comes up on the stage with the stacks. First up is Mangina versus Sydney. <laughs> Sydney elects to go first, and Mangina's like, no, I go first. Sydney's like, I'm a lady. I go first. Mangina proceeds to ask the question. So Manjana says, is it true that you stay at home, don't have your own place, you stay at home with your mama, and you out here fucking for free outside of hotels? <laughs> Which I believe is true. I don't follow Sydney like that. So I don't know, but I believe I've heard this story before. Because Manjana said that I always see you in hotels, which I've seen from the blog, she is always in hotels. So could be true. But Sydney ends up swinging on Mangina. Didn't even ask, she didn't even answer the question. She swung on him. Mangina started swinging back. <laughs> and of course, Sydney starts running back because Sydney can't fight. So she decides to run back. And of course, what happens? Because Sydney is always, Sydney's always been clumsy. She falls and damn near falls off the stage. I died laughing. <laughs> died laughing. But uh, Tokyo comes to her rescue. Everybody's up there laughing and dancing. And Tokyo is screaming at Sydney, sit your ass down, calm the fuck now. And I was like, thank you. I'm glad she did that. Because like at this point, yes, they can fight. But at the end, Tokyo's trying to play. She's trying to win. And she pretty much told him that backstage, like, if nobody swings on you, don't fight. This is what happened. But Sydney then gets her chance to ask the question. She asked Manjana, is it true that Manjana lives with roaches? They start fighting again. 
Sydney starts kicking. And the way she started kicking had me dead because she was kicking like DJ Sky was with Anna. But as she's kicking, man, Johnny gets to swing it and was swinging so good. And Sydney is like, kid, Sydney's kicked, but like you could tell she was not trying to get hit. So she kicked and then tried to duck and jumped down into the fetal position. <laughs> Jumped into the fetal position, fell down there, and man, Johnny gets to swing it. And of course, security tries to break it up. I was dying. It was hilarious. But they finally get them to calm down. We get the next set of rounds, which is Anna versus Suki. Anna said, bring Tokyo up here too. Tokyo comes up there, and here comes Carlissa. So it's Carlissa and Anna now versus Suki and Tokyo. So Anna asked Suki if it's true that her coochie ain't so Gucci. <laughs> Like Anna is funny, but Suki said it made her a million dollars, and she knows how to make a mean. It knows how to make a mean state, and of course the crowd is cheering and chanting. But Suki then asked Anna if it's true that when she fought DJ Sky, when she fell and her ass fell on her face, is she a part of the ass eating crew? And Anna says that she might do both. She like licking ass and gooch. Anna then says to Tokyo, she heard that she was fighting for her life outside of hotels. I was dying, <laughs> dying. Because like I said, I watch all of Tokyo's lives and Tokyo is always in a hotel. She's got one of the, one of her lives. I don't know if y'all have seen it, but if you haven't, go YouTube it because I'm pretty sure it's still on YouTube. Tokyo was in a hotel one night. She was eating food and she, um, she heard screaming. I watched this. I've watched this live so many times. She heard screaming. Like it's a girl screaming, bloody murder. Just screaming. So she stops, takes her camera with her and goes outside and there's a girl outside screaming because apparently, um, I guess one of the dudes that hit her or whatever, the dude that she was with, and apparently she was spitting on him and stuff. Tokyo was trying to get her away from him and she did not want to do it. And Tokyo eventually got to the point where the dude came out, was trying to cuss Tokyo out. Tokyo was like, this ain't what you want. Fuck you. Like, who are you talking to? Calling them gay and stuff, calling them all types of <laughs> crazy stuff. And then it got to the point where she was trying to pull the girl away and she was like, fuck you. Like, don't record me and da-da-da-da because she saw Tokyo recording. And Tokyo's like, fuck you. Get your ass in there and get your ass beat again. <laughs> like, get in there and get your ass beat again. <laughs> and then she ended up leaving. I was dying. Tokyo is hilarious. But I just literally detoured. But y'all get the point. She was in the hotel, as Anna said. Tokyo said, "Who you talking to me? And then she said, yeah. And then Tokyo said, fuck no, bitch. <laughs> she said, I'm a smart bitch, a business bitch. She says she left her nigga and that's why she was in the hotel, but she's not like y'all bitches because she don't stay. Um, she said none of them bitches can get hotels, uh, two hotels for six months to stack their money to go buy a $600,000 house. Anna respected it. She was laughing. Um, but Tokyo then asked Carlissa if it's true that her and her daughter got their ass beat by a little bitch. <laughs> this was funny because we all know it was Krishan because we've all seen it. Yes, they did get their ass beat by her. Carlissa said, is it true that you can't beat my ass tonight? Tokyo said, when them cameras cut, we can run it. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> and then Callie, the daughter, comes up there and says, why you can't do it right now? I was like, that's a valid question. At this point, y'all both was talking and why don't you do it right now? Y'all on TV, y'all on the show that's about fighting. Why not do it now? Suki said, uh, y'all both got y'all asses beat and Callie can't beat her. Callie and Suki square up. Here we go. It gets broken up immediately at this point. But Suki then swings. She gets a chance to swing. She swings and falls. Yodela. This is why I say she got to be on baddies. Y'all didn't see it. Go back and rewatch it. Yodela got a clean. She stuck Cali good. Got a clean right hook. Stuck her good. I don't know if she felt it. Or at least maybe if she felt it, she thought it was Suki because she immediately went to Suki who fell on the ground. She got some licks in on her. Everybody else is trying to swing at this point. Security's jumping up. Random niggas, random ass niggas start coming from the stage, coming from the outside on the side, come running and bum rushing the stage. Security is tackling them. They all falling. I was dying laughing because the way security fell, they all was falling. And when I say falling, not like, oh, I trip fell. Like they literally <laughs> they fell. And some tatted up dude who I cannot, I swear I've seen him before. I don't know who he is, but y'all let me know if y'all know who he is. Trying to fight the crowd and stuff. I'm like, who the fuck is this? But Callie then tries to run up on Suki. And as she's trying to run up on Suki, Stoney was straight duping her shit. Stoney was cracking her. Courtney was screaming as she got popped. But in this one, I'm like, she, alternative facts. I didn't see Stoney getting popped. I saw her doing the popping. But they break that up. Callie's twerking on the front of the stage with security around her. But Suki runs up and she gets over security, swings and missed. Carlissa and Kay Capri get up trying to run up. 
And they finally calm them down and we get one last game. The last game is musical chairs. They start with nine chairs. This is the game that's going to win it all. So they begin. Sydney gets eliminated first. Black Diamond gets eliminated. Anna says she ain't fighting no niggas talking about Sydney and Mangina. <laughs> don't, don't. I'm just telling you what she said. But Stoney and Carlissa, they ain't even trying to get to the chair at some point. This is where you could tell they was like over it. They didn't want to play the games no more. Stoney gets eliminated. Slim gets eliminated. Carlissa gets eliminated. K Capri, Cali, Suki is randomly throwing chairs at K Capri, who then gets up to swing on her. Tokyo saying that Suki is wrong for doing what she's doing. Callie and Stoney start fighting again. And at this point, it looked like Stoney was getting done up. And I don't know if it was because of security or not, but Carlissa and Yodala start trying to jump in as well because Carlissa sees her daughter fighting. Yodala sees her friend fighting. So they start trying to get in. And Stoney gets pulled up from the pile and her hair is all fucked up. Her shirt is all ripped. Hair is just fucked up. And I'm like, damn, I hope she didn't get beat up because I like Stoney, uh, Stoney. <laughs> Stony, <laughs> I like Stony. I do. I liked her on One More Chance. So I, I didn't want to see her get beat up. But if that's what happened, damn. But I would like to see her. Speaking of Stony, I would like to see her on Baddies as well with uh, Yodala. But they separate the teams. Tokyo's team goes backstage. Um, backstage, Suki's telling Yodala, Sydney, and Anna that them bitches was talking shit from the crowd. And then we get Carlissa and Tokyo on the stage with this cheap ass belt. I, I watch a lot of WWE because of Bianca Belair and Montez Ford. Shout out to them. But I watch them, and the belts that they have are super, like, they glamorous, glammed up, look like money. This cheap-ass shit that Zoom Scott, I'm going to give it to season one, but y'all been making some money off these shows. Y'all can afford to put some more work into the belt for the next season. But Tokyo's team won. Loved it. And Bia wrapped it out with the performance to end the, this episode. I love the episode. Honestly, it was good. Um, of course, there was things about it that could be better, but it was entertaining. I'm starting to like, I like, well, I'm not starting to like, I like the lightheartedness of it. Granted, we're going to have fights in every episode, but it's cool to see them at least trying to have fun and playing games. And I like the fact that we have a lot of the Zeus talent from all different shows that Zeus has had, like integrating with each other to do these type of game shows. And like I said, with Movie Bay, when we went live probably a couple months ago, co-ed stuff, like get like a like challenge-based show as well, like where they all can live in the same house, where you got a couple of the dudes, a couple of the girls, you can create a lot of storylines, have them playing games for money at the end. That's just an idea that I would say just going forward in the future. But this is good. Like when you, when you really put this together, think out, the games, think about how you're going to structure it, how you're going to control the cast. This could be good. It could be good. But I enjoyed the episode. Let me know what y'all think down below. Please thumbs up the video. Please subscribe. I know this video ain't going to do 61K like the last one did. Ain't no way in hell, but I want to thank y'all for that. Thank y'all so much for that. Um, if you watch the video through and through, you real. Because that's all I want you to do. Just watch the video and thumbs up the video and drop a comment and engage with me. But that is my video. That's my recap of episode two of Bad vs. Wild Season 1, Tokyo versus Carlissa. I don't know what the next round is because they didn't give us a sneak peek, but I'm actually okay with that. I like the fact that we at least can anticipate who the next round is going to be. But yeah, that's it. That's me signing off. I am going to enjoy the rest of my night, and I hope y'all do the same. Peace. I'll see y'all next week.